This is the Smith's, Smith's Creek station. See if we can get a a view of it. I forgot to mention when I was in the power plant here was the area on the left of the boilers was originally in the basement of the building that had the steam engines on the first floor and the generators on the second floor but in this layout they've got the boilers on the first floor but over to the side so it's not exactly like it was in the original So this is the uh, Detroit, Toledo, and Milwaukee Roundhouse, built in the year 2000 here in Greenfield Village. 
includes many structural elements from the original roundhouse in Marshall, Michigan. Obviously, this doesn't go anywhere on this end, but it could be used to switch locomotives from the, uh, the main track into the roundhouse. they do all their work here. It does seem to be a working facility. like maybe they keep all their steam engines in here when not in use. Okay, I've made my way up to this intersection, and if I hang a right, then I'm in the Libertyville Craftworks area, and then I can loop back around through the farms area, and then I'll be back by the main entrance, and I think I will have done pretty much everything. I'm still looking for the tin type facility. I haven't seen it mentioned. Oh, this is glass working. Let's see how long we can get this one. Shaking and shuddering as my brain but it's getting longer and longer and longer! And I gotta pull the truck. Getting more out of it. There you go. Tighten it up and let it down to the floor. When it hits the floor, it'll case harden up pretty quickly. 
then I'm going to put a couple of square arms and give it a kick and it should break free. Look how long they got that, huh? There it is. Give him a hand, everybody. Yay! And that's the way we came here in the village. Good job. They were just making some candy cane. Uh, candy cane glass there. This is the carding mill. The process of combing raw wool to straighten its fibers. here in 1933. And that's just enough pressure to push that uh, paper into the ink surface. And as my assistant unfurrows the brisket, oh. it's a little sticky today, but and there you go. So two guys who knew what they were doing could make up about 200 of these in an hour, and unfortunately. They're wet, and you can't stack them. You can't uh, do anything until they dry. So you have to either lay them around the shop, or they had clothes lines they hung them on until they were dry. And then once they were dry, you could pack them up and ship them off. But uh, this was really popular um, in the mid 1800s. If you watch any old westerns and. You know, there's always the bad guy who goes and shoots the newspaper out. You print your postcards on here. You didn't have a very big surface uh, to print from. And you use that pedal to run it like you would an old-fashioned sewing machine. And once you started pumping it, it would spin. Um, all our tape comes from these cases. They're called California Jazz cases. And if you were a typesetter, you would have to memorize the location of every letter because you didn't have time to look and there was no, I mean it all looks the same so you would kind of like touch typing, just have to know where the letter is, pull it out, lay it out in this little bar and uh, put it all together when you were done building your smaller subsets. But, the interesting thing about the California Jab case is up there, what's in common with all those letters? Right up here at the top. Big letters. Is A, E, and O, E at combination? Well, they're all the. Yeah. Spofford Sawmill, built in 1940 here using some components of the original mill which was built in the late 1600s and remained in operation until 1925 over or about 250 years. The original mill was in Georgetown, Massachusetts.
And this is the trip sawmill. Built about 1850 in Tipton, Michigan. Built by the British immigrant Reverend Henry Tripp. This is a uh, weaving shop built here in the village, or no, built about 1840 in Bryan County, Georgia. Giving me a space to send a shuttle that has the warp via weft threads. 
the weft threads of the reticle uh, across. So I send it across, beat it back, press it down on the other uh, treadle, and then send that across. And beat that. So there we're able to go and leave uh, around one foot per hour. The Loringer Grist Mill from 1830 Stony Creek in Monroe, Michigan. Looks like the uh, machine shop and foundry is closed. So I'm going to go the other way. Walk back through the craft works area. And then circle around through the then circle around through the uh, the farming areas see if the tin type studio that I missed earlier is operating. They've made a nice thing out of this mill pond here. Attractive spot. It's really part of the stormwater management system. Cleans water and improves our wetlands on its way to the Rouge River watershed. This mill pond is connected to other ponds in Greenfield Village based on an original 1929 design by Henry Ford. This only dates back to the year 2003. looks like the old heirloom type corn not much like the uh, the hybridized corn that we're used to seeing cider mill built in 1937 here in Greenfield Village. The machinery came from Martinsville, Michigan.
two-story barn, or at least two stories. Kept the uh, cattle, other animals down in the lower level. Kept the hay and other feed upstairs where it could be easily dropped down through the floor to feed the animals. Still had a, I don't know if these are animal stalls or if they're just storage areas. No signage to say one way or another. This is uh, the edge of Greenfield Village here. The things on the other side are part of, uh, I think that's still part of, maybe part of the Henry Ford Museum over there. I'm a little disoriented as to which direction is which here. Yeah, that's the station that I got on the train this morning from my round trip. So that is the museum that's just behind it a ways back, but I'm not sure about these buildings right here. If these are part of the Henry Ford or if there's something else. Back at the main entrance. The soybean lab. Port Huron engine. Made by the Port Huron Engine and Thresher Company in 1916. The arrival of the steam traction engine during the fall harvest season caused great excitement as it offered families and neighbors the chance to socialize and work together. Big threshing crews used this huge engine to power their machines as they moved from farm to farm. It also could push or pull other farm devices and run a variety of machines when the belt was hooked up to the steam driven pulley. The Port Huron engine represents the pinnacle of technological development from steam traction engines before they were replaced by gasoline tractors.
back there is where that mill was. was built around 1860 and remodeled in 1897 in Dayton, Ohio. This is the original number six bicycle shop of the succession they had and this is the one where the Wright Flyer was built in sections and then shipped to Kitty Hawk. Let's go around the back, peek through the door. Yeah, the docent said that the building in Dayton, in or near Carillon Park, that's re representing bike shop number six, is a reproduction, and that this is the original one moved here. And uh, there's part of a replica of a Wright Flyer and partial assembly there. So the tintype studio, which is about photography, is supposedly open. I keep hearing that from some docents and other docents say that it's not opening today, so the only way to find out is to go there in person. So this is back where we were this morning when it was raining pretty good. Well, the lights are on in the tintype studio, so maybe at least there's a docent in there. This is around behind the Edison facility that's over there. Yeah, it looks like it's open. Notice all the glass on the roof and the wall there for good illumination. Greenfield Village Tintype Studio, built in 929. Having your photo, photo taken was an event. Charles Tremere was a traveling tintypist until he found work at the Ford Motor Company in 1909. In 1929, he was asked to create authentic old-style tintypes for visitors in Greenfield Village. In this studio, Tremere made portraits of many famous people, including Thomas Edison, Joe Lewis, and Walt Disney. Yeah, don't see a docent here. So you would just sit here with all this fine illumination and curtain diffusion. Sit in the chair with the backdrop of your choice possibly. Get your pic picture took or picture took. In your studio, pose your sitter, add props and background, check lighting, and focus your camera. Things have picked up a little bit in terms of...
less of attendance since the rain stopped. So this afternoon is definitely busier than this morning, but it's still a pretty small crowd compared to what it would usually be in the summer. All the docents I've talked to remark on it. Today, for the safety of our younger riders, we do ask the adults to place themselves on the outside of the row. If this is not practical, please make sure that they're held or easily within your reach. Everyone else, please remain in your seat. Arms lifts heads inside the railroad car. Thank you. sleeping at the top. Ferris Windmill is the oldest windmill existing in the United States. It was originally used for grinding corn. It was located in Cape Cod, Massachusetts in the 1600s. And this is our Daggett Farm, a pre-revolutionary farm, 1754, Andover, Connecticut. You can't go in the house, but you can look in the windows. 
look inside the doorway and they'll talk with you after finish. I'm there waiting. We are behind the torch bike locomotive built in 1873. Oldest. This is the oldest continuous running steam locomotive in the United States today. Built in 1873, used in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan the hauling copper on the Calumet and Hecula line. And that is called the blow down that you just saw. He'll do a couple more. We're using coal for the heat, which heats the water. And the water becomes steam and pushes the steam sheets under pressure. And of course, they love to push the uh, geese across the field. But what we're doing is getting rid of any impurities, such as scaling that is formed on the inside of the boiler. We do this several times during our day, and then every 30 days we take it out and finish it into a complete and joyless wash. Now sit back and enjoy listening to the sights, the sounds, and the smells of the steam locomotive. Imagine traveling in the 1800s. This was the fastest motor transportation, otherwise you were going horseback, horse and wagon, or stagecoach. We do have wildlife, our deer, fox, coyotes, raccoons, a bunch of turkeys out here, so look around as we head back this way. Enjoy. state that it was before they made the M39 Southfield Freeway and put the river in the cement and bottom of all things. But this area is strictly used by our educational department. Water is quite high right now with all the rain that we've had. And we're coming up to Walnut Grove here. This will take you into our back side of our porches and parlors. This is where we have all of our activity during the summertime. Hopefully next year we'll be able to get back to normal if we can all get this all done and over with. Top of the hill again, you'll see the Cottesville Cottage Plus or England. If you have not been up there and you happen to be walking around there, look around, we have a little pet that was buried up there. The Giddings House. Again, a merchant marine from New Hampshire. The White House with the brick back, Bill Webster's home. This is all Maple Lane. You'll be able to see Montgomery School, Montgomery's birthplace. Also, Furniture Slave Quarters from Savannah, Georgia. The Maddox Fire, which is a pre African American home in the 1930s in Bryant, Georgia, which is part of Richmond Hill outside of Savannah, Georgia. And this is our Henry Ford Academy. There's a charter public high school, 9th through 12th grade. Nice way to tell the museum, Tempo 1 is the 12th grade part of the campus. You must live in Wake County, provide your own transportation, and put your name into a lottery list in order to go to school here. Now let's listen to the North American signal for Here Comes the Train.
flight is, is our Amtrak. Goes all the way from Pontiac all the way to Chicago. We actually have an Amtrak station. You can actually see behind the fire so far. They're fine. We also welcome the Woods of the Martha Mary Chapel, named after Henry Ford's mother and mother-in-law. It is a non-denominational church. And on a regular basis, we would have two weddings up there almost every weekend. Now, if you'd like something to eat or drink today, we'd like you to stop in the taste of history because the eatery is open at the present time. Uh, out of the eatery, the state tree is flushed in, has been torn down, and was uh, in the process of being built when all this happened. We're also uh, putting in the new Central Market. Please keep your eyes and legs and head on the inside of the cosplay, but I mean, it's not the type of uh, souvenir I would want to take home or about wire cuts. Thank you. Again, you are in the railroad junction, our railroad roundhouse. You're not able to go in, but you can look in the big the front doors. There's six doors that you can walk in front of and look inside the roundhouse if you choose. Next door to that is Liberty Craft, where you can see our master craftsmen. We just opened the new uh, the print office this weekend. We've also opened weaving, so you can see the, the looms being used. We're going to say hi to Mike as we come in. Please remain in your seat until we come to a full stop. Once we fully stop, you'll be exiting on your left-hand side. If you're leaving us at this station, please just drop your chain so we know that you've the seat you came out of so we can clean the area for the next visitors coming on. Please wait for the engineer's whistle before exiting the train. You must have your mask on. Welcome aboard the Weiser Railroad. For the safety of our younger riders, we do ask the adults to place themselves on the outside of the road. If this is not practical, please make sure that they're held or easily within your reach. Everyone else, please remain in your seat. Arms, legs, head inside the railroad car. And please do not eat, drink, or smoke on board the train. Thank you. And we do appreciate it if you keep, keep your mask on for yourself and those people around you. Thank you. Let's say goodbye to Mike. I will say hi to conductor John as we go by. Passing by our Smith Creek station, this is where the station master family lived on the Grand Trunk Rover outside of Port Huron, Michigan. There was a young man who used to sell newspapers here. His name was Thomas Edison. He caught the baggage car on fire because he had nothing to do with his travels with selling newspapers. And he was thrown off right there at our Smith Street Station, originally outside of Port Huron. Our railroad rock house leads back to 1884 in Marshall, Michigan. This particular facsimile was rebuilt and opened up in 2000. It's on the Detroit, Toledo, and Ironton. Milwaukee, excuse me, Detroit, Toledo, Milwaukee line of the railroad. They would do repairs, get cold, water, and get it back out to the railroad as quickly as possible. Back then they would have had approximately 30 people in, the, in that particular city at Marshall, Michigan, uh, working on the train. So many craft works, we've opened up a couple things more. Like I mentioned, we have our print shop at Open now, and we have our weaving. But we also have our glass floors, our counters, the print office, weaving and carving. Also along with a collection of beautiful glass display over there. We're going to go right through the middle of the working farm district. You'll see the Harvey Firestone farm on your right hand side. It was in Columbia, County, Ohio on the Pennsylvania border. Harvey Firestone was the father of the Firestone River Tire Company. Good friends with Henry Ford. Park. You see a new camp that was born a week, about a week ago. Our little lambs that were born in April. Our chickens, our turkeys, our pigs. Seven acres of the park. We got 
Yeah, pretty sure that some of those buildings I saw earlier when we were in the agricultural area were the backside of some of these buildings. And this is definitely part of the Henry Ford Museum right here. Rather than walk back through the internal concourse, doing the outside here, it's still trying to dribble a little bit, but not enough to really get the camera very wet. Here's the overall layout of the Henry Ford Museum and Greenfield Village. It's the museum itself. There's the uh, Fountain Plaza, Josephine Ford Plaza, where the fountain is, village store, and the entrance to Greenfield Village.
Well, this concludes my two-day visit to the Henry Ford Museum and Greenfield Village. I'm just leaving the area now. Right across the street from me is the Ford Research and Engineering Center. And I'm continuing on now to a week's worth of museum visits, primarily, in Ohio. So there's going to be a lot of other walkthroughs and other related videos following these. In one and a half miles, turn right on Southfield Freeway. It's all Ford stuff around here.